at least it's early morning here in Denmark. Uh, can you hear me clearly? Okay, okay, you can hear me clearly. Okay, this uh, talk is about cryptopianism in um, sons of female uh, gardeners. This is the question I'm going to address in, in this short talk. Can I have the next slide, please? So, so the objective of this study that we did the past two years here in Denmark uh, is to examine if sons of female uh, gardeners or greenhouse workers have increased risk of cryptopianism. Next slide, please. Just a few facts about uh, cryptopianism. Uh, this is, in fact, the most common, the most um, prevalent congenital uh, malformation we have. The prevalence in Denmark and in most other countries uh, too is about two, three, two, three percent in uh, newborn boys. A very frequent uh, congenital anomaly. This disease is not a problem. A big problem, at least in itself. But the reason that it is important to uh, to detect and to prevent, if possible, is that cryptopianism is a very strong, in fact, risk factor for infertility later in life, and also for testicular cancer. And this is the reason that we uh, need to uh, to to take care of this disorder. Uh, there are some data indicating that the disease uh, has become more frequent, but these data are not very uh, consistent, uh, and there are very various, various problems uh, when we interpret these data. Okay, next slide, please. Yes, why could we think about cryptopianism uh, being a problem in um, in greenhouse workers? Yes, of course, because work in greenhouses may entail uh, exposure to pesticides. By inhalation, or probably uh, more importantly, through a skin uptake. Next slide, please. So, so here we have here we have the typical situation: uh, a, uh, a greenhouse worker uh, working with the, the cultures. Um, very often, they have close contact uh, with the, the cultures, and if the cultures have been treated with uh, pesticides, uh, there is a risk that pesticide residues are conferred or transferred from the, uh, the plant leaves uh, onto the skin and from the skin to the, through the skin to the circulation uh, and through the placenta to the, to the, the baby eventually. Okay, next slide please. And the next part of the background is that, uh, as you, uh, all of you also know, that uh, several of these compounds have the potential to interfere with hormonal signaling uh, and may, by such mechanisms, interfere with normal development of the gonads. Next slide, please. Yes, this. Uh, uh, is just to show the, the various uh, pathways by which compounds, pesticides, as well as others, may interfere with the hormonal systems by interfering with production of hormones, with metabolism of hormones, or with receptor binding uh, of hormones. It's next slide, please. There are, this is far from the first study and on cryptopianism in relation to pesticide exposure in various settings. There have been a number of studies, ecological studies, comparing the prevalence of cryptopianism in, in, in various settings, case reference studies, cross-sectional studies, and also studies um, uh, looking in particular uh, at occupational uh, exposures. But to make a long story uh, brief, we can say that results from these uh, about eight, ten uh, different studies are not very uh, consistent. Uh, and I think it's right to say that we still do not have uh, any good or strong evidence that working uh, in greenhouses with exposure to pesticides is really uh, a, uh, 
the risk factor for, for this particular uh, congenital uh, anomaly, protrombinism. The reason that we undertook this study, I'm going to talk about it in a few, very few uh, seconds, is a very small but very good prospective study in Danish greenhouses where uh, the investigators got very detailed uh, information on, uh, on specific pesticides, uh, exposure to specific pesticides during the first three months of pregnancy. And this small study that has been recorded in the literature did show alarming results with an increased risk of uh, four to five times of cryptorganisms. And, um, but, but yet, I mean, the, 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 the conclusions to be, to be drawn from this small study was, were, was uh, limited because of limited study, study size. So we needed a bigger study, and this is what I'm going to talk about here next time, please. So, we identified uh, almost uh, 600 pregnant women that all had been working in greenhouses during the first three months of pregnancy during uh, this period um, indicated here. So we tried to get all the women working in greenhouses in Denmark that we could identify from records from occupational clinics throughout the country and from uh, two big birth cohorts that we have here uh, in Denmark. Uh, and then we used uh, all Danish boys uh, born in the same time period from 85 to 2007 as a, a reference uh, um, a category that is almost one million uh, Danish boys. So this is a big reference for the next language. Yes, exposure assessment is of course uh, important, and here we tried really to get uh, very uh, good information on it, on use of pesticides during this particular period of pregnancy from the occupational records uh, and from questionnaires uh, where the, the women uh, answered questions about what tasks. And then we had uh, experts in this field to judge uh, based on these uh, uh, data whether the women were uh, exposed uh, or not during pregnancy. Um, of course, it's possible to work in greenhouses without any uh, particular exposure. So people could be, the women could be not exposed, or they could be low level or high level exposed. I'm not going to further detail with that next time, please. Yes, and with respect to the disease, we got information uh, on that from the uh, National Patient Registry, where all inpatients and also from 95 uh, uh, and onwards, or also uh, outpatient contacts with the uh, hospital systems have been uh, recorded very reliably. So that way we got information uh, by record linkage uh, with, with, uh, on uh, the diagnosis of cryptorganism. Uh, and at the same time, we also got information on uh, whether the boys have had surgery to correct this anomaly. Thank you. Next slide, please. I just took a sip of water. Yes, let's then, let's then uh, jump directly to the results. We analyzed the data by logistic regression and also by the survival um, uh, methods to take account of uh, variation F at the time when this diagnosis was made. And here you see, uh, here you see one of the, the two main results, namely that we, among these, uh, in fact the number is 640 women and not 562 as I mentioned before. This is a small error in the slides and I apologize for that. We had 17 cases of cryptorganism uh, corresponding to a prevalence of 2.7%. Uh, and in the entire Danish population during the same time period, you see we had 20,000 cases of cryptorganism corresponding to a prevalence of 2.4%, uh, giving a uh, crude uh, relative risk of 1.1 1 
Um, and when we adjust from those fences that we were able to adjust from, we obtained almost the same results. So this result is reassuring. Working in a greenhouse in Denmark during this period is not associated uh, in itself by uh, an increased risk of having made some of the trophies. Uh, but let's then go to the next slide. Because uh, you uh, could, of course, easily imagine that uh, some women uh, with uh, particular exposures might have increased risk. And what we have here uh, is results of internal comparisons where high-level exposed gardeners were compared to low-level exposed gardeners. And here you see we have a slightly increased uh, risk uh, of about uh, two, relative risk of two, but you also see that